the purpose of this video is to explain how plethysmography enables you to measure the residual volume of the lungs and thus the total volume of the lungs. The main principle at work here is uh, boyle marriott's law, which states that pressure times volume is constant, assuming that the amount of gas and the temperature of the gas in a closed system stays constant. The consequence of this is that in a closed system, if you have a drop in volume, you will automatically have an increase in pressure that makes it such that their product stays constant. The apparatus used in plethysmography is quite simple. You have a box, and to this box you have connected a pressure probe that measures the pressure inside the box. You have your patient inside of this box. And his lungs are connected to his mouth, obviously, but the important part is that his mouth is connected to a tube that communicates to the outside world. So the box is airtight and the patient breathes in through this tube before the start of the experiment. At the start of the experiment there's a tap which closes this tube and it's important to note that at the start of the experiment uh, the volume of air inside the patient's lungs, so the volume of at the start of, of the experiment, is equal to the patient's um, functional residual capacity. In other words, it's the volume of air left inside the lungs after a normal expiration, a tidal volume. So, there's a second pressure probe which measures the pressure inside the mouth. The reason why we measure the pressure inside the mouth is because this pressure inside the mouth is indicative of the pressure inside the lungs. Um, since this is a closed system, any change in volume, you know, the tap is closed, this is a closed system, an increase in the volume of the thorax while the patient tries to breathe in will result in a, in a decrease in pressure inside of the lungs, which we can measure by measuring the decrease in pressure in the mouth. So you have two closed systems, one with the lungs, and we can measure this guy's pressure, and we have a second closed system, which is the box, and we can measure the box's pressure which is again a closed system. How do you get from these pressures and these changes in pressure to the volume of the lung? This is what I'm going to show you. Again, you use the boyle marriott law to find your unknown, which is VL0. So you know that VL0 multiplied by the pressure. VL0 is the volume in the thorax at the beginning of the experiment, okay, the, the, the functional reserve capacity, multiplied by the pressure in the mouth at the beginning of the experiment, which is indicative of the pressure inside the lungs, is equal to the volume of the lungs at the end of an attempted inspiration. Note that there's no air coming in because the tap is closed, so while the thorax expands, you have an increase in the thorax volume, so you have an increase in the volume of the lung. Um, and you multiply this and you get the same thing, you multiply it by the pressure at the end of the inspiration attempt, so that's equal to the initial pressure plus the change in pressure in the mouth. Sorry, this has to be an M. And again, you measure, so you just, you measure the change in pressure in the mouth using this pressure probe. You know, you, you already know the pressure in the mouth at the start of the experiment um, using this pressure probe, and you know this pressure again, it's the same thing as here. Your unknown, and what you're trying to find out is here, it's, it's your volume of the lung at the start of the experiment, you have one unknown, and in order to be able to solve this equation, you need to find out the change in the volume of the lung. And you can do this by measuring the change in pressure of the box. So here is the link between the pressure of the box and the volume of the lung. I'm going to show it to you now. Hold on. What you know is that the volume of the box at the start of the experiment multiplied by the pressure of the box at the start of the experiment so is the same principle again, is equal to the volume of the box uh, plus the change in 
the, the volume of the box, because I mean the thorax expands into the box, so it eats up the air, uh, the volume of the box. So the increase, well, I mean the drop in uh, in uh, the volume of the box is the same thing as the increase in the volume of the thorax. It's just that it has a negative sign, so you can subtract the increase in uh, lung volume here, and you will get the same thing as the decrease in uh, the box volume. And so this is the volume of the box after the patient tries to breathe in, and you multiply this by the pressure at the end of the attempted inspiration. So you have the pressure in the box at the start, plus the increase in pressure of the box. So again, the pressure in the box will increase because the, the, pressure, the volume of the box decreases. Same thing here. So you can measure this using this probe. You can measure this using this probe at the start of the experiment. You know this because you know the dimensions of the box and you know the volume taken up by the patient. So you can you can calculate the volume of the box. You know you know this because you measured it. Again, you know this because you calculated it. So you have one unknown. You can solve the equation and you will get the change in the volume of the lung. And then you can simplify this, and you can you will be able to find the volume of the lung. Now, I will do that now. So just to simplify things, I'm going to call. I'm going to change the name of the variables because otherwise it's going to be too confusing. So let's say that this is going to equal to a. The pressure is going to be equal to small b. Again, this is the thing, same thing as a. The change in volume of the lung is going to be big a. The change in the, the initial pressure is going is the same thing as small b. The change in pressure is going to be big b. So you have this. Just to bring back the initial variables, you have the volume of the lung at the start of the experiment is equal to the change in volume of the lung multiplied by the initial pressure or at the mouth sorry plus the change in pressure at the mouth or change in volume of the lung that's big A uh, multiplied by change in pressure at the mouth and you divide this by the change in pressure at the mouth so you can substitute what you found out using the, the pressure of the box here. And you can substitute what you found out using this second pressure probe here. And then you can find out the initial volume of the lung, which in this case is the functional residual capacity. Well, because you closed the tap when the patient was at the end of a normal expiration.